and welcome back to Amy Reads. So I thought that I would do a tag video for you all because I feel like I haven't done just kind of a fun random tag in a while. So I went digging through the book tag archives on YouTube and I found a really old tag that some people have been redoing lately and that is the Goodreads book tag. So if you don't know, and you probably do if you are on booktube or watching booktube, that Goodreads is an incredible website where you can keep up with all the books you've read want to read um, are currently reading you can rate and enter for giveaways and join groups and just talk with people about books it's incredible get on there if you're not on there already and I'll leave the link to my Goodreads page down below if you're wondering why there's like a weird red stripe um, you can see that I got a little sunburned yesterday um, and I used the stupid spray sunscreen well you can see how well that did so if you keep I keep seeing my arm in the camera and being like People are probably wondering what's up with that. Anyway, that's why I, I got a little sun. So this tag uh, shouldn't be too long, so let's go ahead and get started. So the very first question is, what was the last book I marked as read on Goodreads? So that is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. Um, this is a YA mm, magical realism type of book um, about a young girl whose mother has committed suicide and she starts seeing her mother as this giant red bird um, and so she ends up traveling to Taiwan where her mother was from and visiting her mother's family and sort of like continuing to search for her mother who she feels like is trying to communicate with her. It's absolutely beautiful. I'll talk more about it in my wrap up for the month but that is the last book that I read. Number two is what am I currently reading? Um, so as of this video being filmed, which is June the 10th today, I'm currently reading The Death of Bees by Lisa O'Donnell. This is a book that I drew from my TBR jar this month and I didn't really know anything about it when I bought it. I just kind of bought it because it was a few dollars at my used bookstore. And this is about um, two young sisters. I think they're like 15 and 12. Um, and basically I'll kind of just tell you what the little, the, the short blurb is um, on the back and then it's that their parents are buried in the backyard and neither of them were loved. So you don't know what's going on there. Um, so I don't even want to tell you too much more about it. They have a neighbor who's an elderly uh, gay man who kind of takes them under their wing a little bit, but he doesn't really know what's going on. He doesn't know where their parents are or anything like that. So that's kind of all I'll tell you. I'm a little over halfway though, and I'm really liking it. Number three is what is the last book I marked for my TBR? And that is Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is about two best friends, Claudia and Monday, and one day Monday goes missing. Um, Monday is a young black girl, and so Claudia is trying to figure out where she went, but it seems that no one else can remember the last time they saw her or where she went. Um, so I'm, that's all I know about it. It sounds really interesting to me. I also would like to read Tiffany D. Jackson's first book called Allegedly. Um, I kind of added those both at the same time to my TBR. Number four is what book do I plan on reading next? I'm actually only like 10 or 15 pages into this. I did kind of read a couple pages of it the other day and that is uh, Blood Water Paint by Joy McCullough. This is a library book but it's due back very soon so like maybe tomorrow. Um, so I might try to read this next um, if if I can do that and not it not be too late at the library then I'm going to try to read this next. This is um, fiction but based on a true story and it's written in verse. This is about a young painter in uh, Rome in 1610. Her name was Artemisia Gentileschi. And I, I'm probably butchering that name. Um, but she was raped and so she had to choose whether or not she was going to stand up for herself and accuse her rapist um, and face death, which is what ended up happening. Um, or, you know, she was going to play, play like most women in, in Rome in 1610 did. I mean, you didn't speak up. So anyway, this is the true story of this uh, young woman and this is written in verse. Number five is do you use the star rating system on Goodreads? And I do use that system. Um, I do wish they had half star increments. That's like my one thing. Like, I don't usually get more technical than a half star. Sometimes I do. But I do wish that they had like three and a half, four and a half kind of thing because sometimes like if it's a four and a half book to me like I won't put five stars on Goodreads because I'm like five stars on Goodreads I feel like should be reserved for like true five star reads. Number six is are you doing the 2018 reading challenge? I have done the reading challenges on Goodreads since 
2014, I want to say. So yes, I am doing it. Um, the last two years I've set it at 100 books, but one of my goals for this year was to sort of not focus on quality over quantity necessarily, but to just to really choose the books I want to read and not not concern myself so much with the quantity of books I've read. So I've actually set it at 50, um, and I'm already almost to that goal. I don't think I'll hit 100 by the year's end, and I really don't care. But uh, to answer that question, yes, I am. Number seven is, do you have a wish list? Um, I don't have a wish list that I keep on Goodreads. Basically, if I want to actually buy a book, I add it to my Amazon wish list. So I don't know if that's what that means by that question, but yeah, I have an Amazon wish list that's just for books. So I do add them into there, and then I occasionally will like sort them by price to see if any of them are like cheap or on sale. So yeah, I definitely do that. Number eight is what book do you plan on buying next? Um, there are a lot of great renew new releases coming out in June. Um, and also July and also every other month this year. I can link you to my most, my most recent most anticipated reads um, video for the second quarter of the year. Um, but I did just recently purchase uh, Save the Date by Morgan Matson, which I am planning on reading in the month of June. So there are others though like Puddin by Julie Murphy um, from Twinkle with Love by Sandhya Menon that um, came out either tail end of May or very beginning of June that I am really wanting to read. So probably one of those. Also The Strange Fascinations of Noah Hypnotic by uh, David Arnold, which I love David Arnold and somehow like forgot to add that book into my most anticipated reads of the year, but it absolutely is. I've almost bought it a couple times since it's been out for like two weeks. Number nine is do I have any favorite quotes? Um, I do have favorite quotes and it asks if we want to share any of those in the question. Um, I do have some quotes saved on my Goodreads, so um, one of my favorite quotes, and it was in, I think this is Trent of the Traveling Pants book, because I don't know if you recall, um, there was like a quote in between each chapter, and it was, nothing takes the taste out of peanut butter quite like unrequited love, and it's uh, Charles Schultz, because it's from Charlie Brown. There's also the excerpt from uh, Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut, where he's talking about Lot's wife uh, turning around. Um, I'll read it to you. And Lot's wife, of course, was told not to look back where all those people in their homes had been. But she did look back, and I love her for that because it was so human. So she was turned into a pillar of salt. So it goes. Um, that's another one of my favorite quotes. Number 10 is, who are my favorite authors? I feel like that's changed a lot over the years, and it really just depends on the category that you're talking about. I do read a lot of YA contemporary, so a lot of my favorite authors tend to be um, mostly YA authors. Um, you know, there are also like some chick lit authors that I really love. Um, so just some that come to mind, Rainbow Rowell, um, Morgan Matson, Jenny Hahn, uh, Jennifer Weiner, Jeff Zentner, David Arnold. Um, Gosh, lots. I'm trying to think of some more. Of course, I love, like, I also love horror, so I love Stephen King. I love his son, Joe Hill. Um, I don't know. I, I read a lot of different stuff. I have a lot of favorite authors. Um, super into Taylor Jenkins Reid this year. She's definitely a favorite author. That I didn't, you thought maybe I could go into video without mentioning her, but you were wrong. Um, she's definitely a new favorite of mine. Number 11 is have you joined any groups on Goodreads? And I have. Before I started booktube I actually, I think it was 2014 and 2015 I actually did, um, actually maybe 2013 as well. I did some, I created my own reading challenge so I was trying to read 25 books. It's funny because like now I read lots and lots of books but at the time I was trying to read 25 books from different genres for the year. Um, so I created those groups and of course was part of those um, and I think I'm a part of like an East Tennessee group on there because I live in East Tennessee. Um, but yeah, I get invitations to groups occasionally and we'll check them out. Um, I'm not really active in any of the groups but I do belong to some of them. And so that's it. Number 12 is just, do you want to add any more questions? To which I don't think I do. Um, but anyway, hopefully that kind of gave you a little bit of an update on like my reading and let you know a little bit about what my Goodreads looks like. Please come follow me on Goodreads. Let's be friends um, so that we can see what each other is reading. I will link everything for that down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And I'll be back soon with more book talk. Bye!